So there's one question that I get asked so often, and that is, how big can you print with your camera and how many megapixels do you need? So I've got the 24 megapixel Z5 here. I've got the 45 megapixel Z7. We're gonna go and take some photos of some woodland, some vistas, the seascape like I've got behind me, and we're gonna print them out really big and I can't wait to see the results. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I'm in Snowdonia in Wales and in this beautiful oak woodland which I'm exploring and it is really amazing. It's quite difficult at the moment because the light's shining through and um, that's just making it a little bit difficult but hopefully when the light drops I get some nice reflected light and be able to get some shots. But I'm here to basically check out the difference between a sort of entry level full frame and there's nothing better than this Nikon Z5 with a kit lens compared to the top of the level full frame the Z7 and a top of the range lens as well the 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8 and I'm going to print them huge so I'm going to go over the next few days take some shots and then I'll talk about what, what I think about that what I think the um results might be like and then I'm going to print them really big on my printer back at the studio and see what we get but wow it is so nice here tonight right let's see what I can find this isn't a bad little shot here is it but I think we'll be able to find something better call me out tiger call me out why don't you so you might just be able to make out a mountain just up here somewhere um, and just the ridge of it and, and the sun's just about to drop behind that ridge and that's going to be good although it looks pretty with the, the sun like this what, what I'm hoping for is the sun to drop behind that but the glow from the sort of blue sky still to sort of reflect down and just create some nice warm light and the warmer um, light will still be coming from over that direction because that's where the sun is. So that's my, um, that's my hope. There's some really, really nice uh, oaks and it just looks <laughs> really amazing. It's a bit like when you first go to a woodland that you've not been to before, it's a bit overwhelming, but I think I found something just over there that I'll show you in a minute. Um, it's just so still. The only thing you can hear is the mosquitoes, which is not so good. Lift me up higher. So this is Nigel in the studio. Unfortunately, I seem to have muted my microphone in this section. But basically what I was trying to say is this is the composition. The light's gone down. I've got some really nice light on the trees now. And, you know, that's that's making quite a big difference. And then just wanted to just talk about the composition a little bit with this tree in the background being the main character and then all the other trees sort of supporting it a little bit. And I just wanted to talk about the background and how it all ties in together. Uh, I was also careful to sort of remove the sky from the image as well. And I, I chose this composition because I felt that it would show a lot of detail in the corners as well. And that's one of the things that I wanted to have a look at. The other thing to mention with the Z5 and the Z7 and you know it's not just about megapixels and that's what I was just saying it's not just about megapixels it's about the other things with the camera as well you know perhaps that you want the Z7 because it's got a slightly better screen and, and when you're choosing cameras you should not just look at megapixels you should look at the functionality of the camera as well so let's have a look at the photo and on to the next scene Oh, this location is so amazing. And, and this is a really good example of why I think it's good to shoot in blue skies and clear skies, especially when the sun's just gone behind a mountain or you can find some woodland that's in shade. This is perfect because there's a valley, there's a mountain over there, and then I'm just on the edge of the woodland. So it's getting all that sort of really nice light coming through. 
and you get that really nice warm light. And then these trees down here with the foliage on just look so good. So this will be, this will be fantastic. I'll definitely take this with, with both cameras. I mean, I might not print all these obviously, but we'll choose um, some to print. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get a vista, a, a woodland in a seascape, hopefully. <laughs> and um, we'll, we'll, we'll print one of each. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Oh, just look at the difference it makes when the sun's gone in and we've just got that glow from the sky now. Just look at this. Look how this is glowing. So there's no light on it, but we've got blue skies. The sun's gone down. It's 36 minutes before sunset and this is just really nicely glowing so look out for that when you're in the woodland or when you're anywhere really look at how the light is interacting with the land because you can often get much better conditions than you think just by waiting a few minutes right back to my camper van It's the morning now and the clear skies have gone a little bit, We've got some really quite nice clouds and I've come to an area that has got a good view in sort of two directions so I'm aiming to try and get some of the early light just coming down the valley here and there's a good view over there with a lake and what I'm really interested in with the Z5 is just how this kit lens will perform on it and what the difference will be when I put the 24 to 70 2.8 lens on this camera. So I'm going to take some shots with the kit lens and with the 24 to 70 f 2.8 and you know we can compare all the different outcomes which will be really really interesting. So this is a shot that just needs a little bit more light just on these hills and yeah I think it'll look pretty good. There's a really nice sort of diagonal line of these trees. It'll be perfect in autumn, this. Now take back all them hard words. I'm a man. So I've got the 24 to 70 f2.8, which is probably one of the best lenses that I've ever used. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what that's like on the Z5. And I've taken this same scene on the Z5 and the Z7 with both lenses. And it's pretty good. You know, you can just see up here, we've got these amazing clouds, which just, you know, look, look really good coming through the valley. I think it'd be really nice if we've got some light through the valley. And um, yeah, we're about three minutes before sunrise. So there's a chance, I think, depends what the clouds like on the horizon. Um, and then the view in that direction is pretty good as well. Oh, so I found this amazing place. Well, I say I found it. I looked on a map and it told me where it was. And um, it's quite a famous rainforest. And I think there should be some um, ancient oaks here. So I'm going to see if we can find them. Uh, I just want to say something about uh, the Z5 and, and also um, megapixels, really. Because one of the questions that I get asked the most is, is 24 megapixels enough? Can I print with it? How big can I print with it? And... What I wanted to try and do in this video is, is obviously look at this Z5. You've seen some of the photos that I've taken already. Take a range of different photos and then print them and see what they're like. I, I suspect that the Z5 will be able to print really big pictures and they'll, they'll look fantastic. If you pixel peep, then obviously a, a larger megapixel camera will be a little bit better. But the difference is small. It is very small. And the percentage increase, if you look at it, and, and I'll overlay something here that shows you the difference between 24 megapixels and 45 megapixels isn't, isn't huge. So yeah, I'm gonna try and find something. It's quite harsh. The light's pretty harsh. Um, 
But yeah, I'll probably do stuff handheld. This has got in-body stabilization, so I should be good handheld. At the moment, I've got the, again, the 2470 F2.8 on, which is a little bit heavier, but I think I'll be good. Uh, it's just a question of just watching the shadows, really, because um, our eyes are pretty good and, and it looks good to us, but it's a huge dynamic range at the moment. Right. So I thought it'd be interesting just to take one shot, just to have a look at the dynamic range of both cameras, the Z5 and the, and the, the Z7, and, and see, you know, does the sensor make a huge amount of difference? If you look at the specs, then it, it is a little bit different, but I want to see some real world examples. So I've got a super high contrast scene here. Um, it's a reasonably nice composition, but I would never take it at this time of day. Usually there's too many shadows on the, on the trees. Um, so I'm going to take it with both cameras at different exposures and we can have a look at it back in Lightroom. So as you can probably see, the scenery around me has now changed. I've come to the coast with an idea of just taking a lighthouse. I thought I've taken some woodland, I've got a little bit of a vista, so it'd be good to come and do some coastal photography. And it's really good here. There's a lighthouse that looks over back to the mountains where I was this morning. So yeah, I'm just gonna take another shot with the Z5 and the Z7, and then we can print them out and compare them later. It is still so warm here in, Wales it's just it's crazily warm it's about 28 degrees C everyone in America now is saying that's so cold but this to us in September that's crazy right anyway these dead trees look quite good as well so I think I'm gonna see if I can grab a shot of these just handheld uh, maybe with the mountains in the background Oh, so finally made it to the lighthouse and as you can see, this is such a spectacular scene. We've got the lighthouse here, these amazing rocks and then Snowdonia in the background, those amazing mountains. And I've got to say, I think the light, although it's not very bright, we've not got a lot of sun out, that there's a lot of rain cloud above, so it could be really good. So I'm gonna um, try to take some shots again with the Z5 and the Z7 and see what we get. I've got plenty of time. It's two hours, 14 minutes before sunset. Um, that's the precise amount of time I have. So this is like a little mini lighthouse near here, which is also quite photogenic. But, um, oh, just whilst I'm waiting for sunset, I thought I'd just come and have a look at this over here and see if I could find anything. I mean, it's all so beautiful, but I feel like the best shot's still over there. But I might take a few shots here. If I find anything amazing, I'll show you the photos. Okay, so I just want to talk about the composition a little bit. I've only got a 24 millimeter lens, so usually I'd come a little bit closer and shoot a bit wider, but because I've got the 24 to 50 millimeter kit lens, I wanted to do a similar thing um, with the 24 to 70 as well. So I've just got the 24 millimeter lens and um, yeah, I've got these rocks in. I've just been careful about the placement of this lock, rock at the bottom. And then also out to the right hand side, you can just see I've got the rock um, on, on the right hand side, bottom right. That's, I've just been careful where I position that as well. And the top of this rock needs careful positioning in the background. And then there's also the white path that's just, you've got to be a little bit careful about as well, because you have too much of that white path over there, then it can look a, li look a little bit complicated. But I can't wait to see what these look like. I'm really intrigued to see how the 
kit lens and the Z5 compare against the expensive Z7 and 24 to 70 lens? Ah, I think we've had the last of the light there. This was just lit up when I got the shot, but it's gone behind um, a bank of cloud, as usually happens in landscape photography. Oh well. Wow, what an amazing 24 hours of shooting. I managed to get in two sunsets and a sunrise. And yeah, I really enjoyed shooting with the Z5. And I think it's, you know, valid to do this because, you know, you can look at DP review and see the, the, the facts, you can pixel peep. And I think if you do that, then you're probably always gonna go for the higher megapixel camera. But the reality is that it probably doesn't make a huge difference. Um, but I wasn't sure, so I thought, Let's try it. So I've got my prints in front of me. I've printed them about a meter wide. So um, at this size, then hopefully we'll see a little bit of difference. And I've also got some A2 prints as well, and we can compare them. Um, obviously, I could have done this simpler than, you know, by just enlarging a section and printing it on a smaller bit of paper. But I thought this was a bit more fun. And it's something I get asked all the time. So if you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's taken quite a long time to produce this video, um, longer than usual because obviously I've printed, about to sort of think about what, how I'm gonna compare the, the, the two cameras and quite a long, long time shooting woodlands, a vista and a seascapes. So yeah, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me and my YouTube channel and the algorithm. Okay, this first print here, the one you can see right in front of you is shot with the Z5 and the kit lens. So this is the Z5, uh, which is a full frame, 24 megapixel entry level camera. Um, and it's the, I think it's $300 kit lens um, when it's bought with the Z5. So it's a, it's a cheap lens, this. And <laughs> this is so cool. I mean, if you just saw this photo, I think you'd think, that's fine. I am really, really happy with that. You can see a lot of detail in the trunk area here and all these sort of ferns coming coming down here. Um, and the detail is just amazing. Um, and, and also, uh, there's not a huge amount of dynamic range in this, but I'll talk a bit more about that in, in, in another photo. But it just picks up all the detail in the shadows and, and the highlights. Where you notice it a little bit, I shot this, I shot most of my um, photos on the on the on this kit lens around about f8. I did that because that was the sharpest point at which, which I got the most depth of field. The sharpest point on the lens is probably about f4 um, when it's at 24 millimeters and f5, 6 I think at 50 millimeters. But this is the sh sharpest point of the lens where you get the most depth of field, and and it's good. Um, it's super sharp in the center here. Um, but it drops off a little bit of the edges, like around here, it, 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 it is definitely um, losing some of the quality and, and up here as well, but you just wouldn't notice that. So let's have a look at the next one, which is the Z7, same scene, Z7 um, with the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens. I'll put the prices and compare the prices of the two kits here, so you can see this is the next one, oh, and yeah. It is, from a distance, you cannot tell a difference. I put, I held both of these up um, and asked my, my kids what they thought was the best one and they picked different ones. You just can't tell. From like two meters away, you can't tell. You have to come close. But when you do come close, there's definitely a difference. You know, there's a little bit more detail in the ferns here. Um, there's a lot more detail over here on this left-hand side. The edge detail on this lens is definitely better. You do see that, that. Um, when you, when it's printed this big, um, yeah, it's, it's it's there's definitely definitely an improvement. But in terms of colours, any fringing, um, there's no difference really. You, it, it looks as good in a real world situation printed this big. But when I say there's a difference, that's because you compare the two side by side. Now it's not very easy for me to put these two prints side by side. But if I just try, um, you can see in this bit here. The, the trunk, I can't really do it, can I? But that the, this has just got a little bit, I, you know, I've got to even look at the camera, but yeah, this is the this is the um, Z5, and you can see that it's definitely sharper here. Uh, but it's not, it's not huge, it really isn't huge. 
Um, and I've got something that I, I want to talk about at the end of the video, so stick around for that because I'm also doing a giveaway as well. Um, but there's something really interesting at the end, end of the video that I do, which I think if you've got a 24 megapixel camera or any lower megapixel camera will really help your photos if you're going to print them big. Okay, so before we get on to the ones of the seascapes, I've just got the woodland ones here. So yeah, these are, these are the woodland ones. Okay, so this is the same configuration. I've got the um, this one, which is the Z5 24 megapixel with the kit lens, and then I printed um, another one with the Z7. I really like this scene, by the way. Um, I thought I thought this was quite a nice sort of um, vista early morning. This was taken a, about sunrise, so maybe it's about five minutes before sunrise, and you can see the details really good in this house down here. What an amazing house! Hey, imagine living there. Um, but the detail you can see all through this, just the ridge lines really, really sharp. Um, even to, to the edge here with this tree, which I thought would the, the kit lens would fall down, but when printed at this size, you just can't see it. It's slightly soft here, but not that bad. And again, it's not too bad there. Then if you compare it to the, this is the Z7, I mean, I mean, you can't really tell a difference to be honest. You'd have to be really, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> if you put these two in front of me, I don't think I'd choose which one is taken on the 45 megapixel camera and which is on the 24 with the kit lens. It, so printing at this size, when you print in A2, I think you really can't tell, tell the difference. Now, we haven't got anything really sharp in the corners here and I think that's probably where you probably would tell the difference a little bit um, at this size. But no, I think if, if, if you've got a fairly cheap lens and a 24 megapixel camera, you're going to be super fine printing at A2. And also at A1, it'll be fine when, you, when you're just viewing it from a, from a distance. So yeah, so that's interesting. Um, I, I, I thought you'd probably notice a difference at this size, but you don't. Before I get onto the seascape shots, um, that I took on the coast, um, obviously, being seascapes. <laughs> I just want to show you this shot. So this was one that you saw me take, and I showed it, um, but I printed it out, and I really like it. And I want to say why I like it, because there's a few things about it that I think look, look really good. So I really like the texture in, in, in these trees here. This was taken when the sun had just gone behind the clouds, um, and so I've just got nice sort of even lighting on the trees. And then I've got this sort of ridge line in the background. I really like the fact the tree goes all the way through the image. And I also really like the fact that I've just got these people in. I was a little bit worried that these people were going to ruin it. But actually, I think they add something to the image. Um, they just create, give it a little bit more character, I think, um, being by, by the coast. So I like that. I, I, I really like that. It's something a little bit different for me. I, I tried it in colour, but I just don't think it worked quite as well as, as black and white. Because it had quite a lot of textures and shapes in it. So, okay, let's get on to the other coast shots of the lighthouse. Um, and this is where I swapped the lenses. So I put the 24 to 70 f2 on the Z5, um, and then the kit lens on my Z7. Um, so let's have a look at those and see how they, they've come out. So I'll just move these over here. Let's bring this over. Okay, so this is the Z5 but with the 24 to 70 f2 lens on. Now I realize that lens is quite an expensive lens and you probably won't maybe buy that lens for um, the, the, the Z5. But also you've got the option of an intermediate lens like this, like the 24 to 70 f4 lens. And this lens is amazing. Um, and it's a lot lighter and a lot cheaper than the other lens. And I expect other manufacturers have a range of lenses as well. So it's probably worth looking at that. But again, on first look, this is just such a stunning image. It's worked so well. I really like the composition. Um, I think everything works well. I was a little bit worried about this path, but I think it's fine. This boat in the background adds to it, and then the mountains in the background there. We've got some nice sort of light on, on, the, on the lighthouse. And then the five minutes or so the light came out and hit this rock, it was pretty good. The advantage of this is that it's a lot sharper towards the corners, so obviously, you know, I've got that sharpness now with the with the sharper lens. I don't know if I really notice anything in the middle. Um, so it's probably just the corners that are benefiting, which is what you'd expect. But but the difference isn't so huge as the as the price tag really. 
So I, I suspect that intermediate lens is probably fine for most people. Um, so yeah, I mean, it looks good. The only thing I would say is that printed at this size, when you really peer close and look at this area here, then you lose a little bit of that detail. And then if we look at the Z7 with the kit lens on, this is the Z7 with the kit lens, then I feel that, again, we've lost the, the sharpness in the corners, which you would expect, especially in this corner here, there's a definite de degradation of the, of, of the quality. But this area, even with the kit lens is sharper than the Z5 printed at this size. So I mean, it's, it's marginal, but it's, de it's definitely a little bit sharper. Again, up here, there's just a little bit more detail that you can see in the, in the lighthouse here. Um, so that megapixel increase is definitely, definitely helping. But then, um, just before I show you the final print, I'll tell you what I did. So then I thought, I know what, why don't I try and upscale it? And there's something called super resolution in Photoshop. And that uses the neural engine within Photoshop to sort of sample the pixels around and try and create a higher megapixel image. And basically it multiplies it by four. So you end up going from a 24 to almost a hundred megapixel image. Um, so I printed that image from the Z5 with the um, expensive lens, um, the 2.8, um, 24 to 70 lens, I printed that one. And yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> so if I just show you that one. So that's this one here. And I'd say it looks better than the, the, the Z7, the Z7 one. Because it's got that sharp lens on, I've upscaled it. I was really shocked. I didn't think this would look as good, but it does. It looks super amazing, <laughs> which is just blowing me away, really, because that means, um, yeah, I just can't believe that. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's it. That that that's a bit of a revelation. Now, this is just one particular image, and it might be that the rock detail here works very well in that neural engine, although it is pretty good up there. So what I'm going to do is that if you're signed up for my newsletter, um, I'm going to share in my next newsletter a link to the high resolution images so you can go and actually pixel peep yourself um, of these images that I took. Um, but you just need to be signed up for the newsletter so there's a link in the description below. So I'm also doing a giveaway and I'm going to give away this print here, this print, this super resolution print taken on the Z5. So what you've got to do to win that is comment below an idea for a future video. And the top idea by votes below for a future video will win this print. So I'll just look in the comments, whatever's at the top, and it's got to be an idea for a future video, will win this print. And I'll check that out in a week's time. Okay, so that's it. There's a lot to talk about in this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Something a little bit different. Um, and um, yeah, thanks ever so much for watching. Until next Sunday, bye.